Costco for rehab, and it's very convenient. She can place up behind what was good um, Sam Hospital, right across the street, literally from where her sister lives. So it makes it very nice for her sister to be able to visit her there. As have I on your behalf. Are there any announcements? Harvest Home is next Sunday. Next Sunday will be Harvest Home. Okay, very good. Anything else? If not, we begin with Confession and Forgiveness, page 77. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah. Do not be provoked by evil doers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take the Lord, who shall give you the heart of Submit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Be 
be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in his means. For evil doors shall cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I am grateful to God for my worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, the faith that lived first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality and light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason, I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Here ends the second reading. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me, while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink? Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, We are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. You saw me perhaps running around during the first hymn, and that was to gain clarity about our schedule for this week. It says in the bulletin that Bible study will begin on Monday, October 3rd. I did not want to do Bible study unless we had at least six people. We came up with five who were willing to have Bible study, but it seems that three of the five are currently sick with COVID. So we will not have Bible study tomorrow. So no Bible study tomorrow, October 3rd. We will try for the 10th. As I read today's lessons, especially the first reading and the psalm, two words came to mind, patience and end, E-N-D. That is, be patient and 
know that the end will come. Also in my mind, as I think about these things, is my last conversation with one of my classmates, word of whose death came to us this week. When we last spoke by phone, Linda Bixler told me about a very painful condition she had in her face. The doctors couldn't solve it. Her prayers seemed to go unanswered. It was not only a physical struggle for her, it was a spiritual one as well. Apparently, she finally put herself in a nursing home because she knew that her care was beyond what her husband could or would do. And there she died. Tragic. In any case, there is her prayer in our first reading. O oh Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence, and you will not say? The prophet Habakkuk of that reading seems to have problems that were different from Linda's problems. She had this painful physical condition. Habakkuk was dismayed by the triumph of the wicked over the righteous in a world in which justice was perverted. But the basic spiritual challenge was the same. They both cried out to God for help, but they did not see forthcoming the help they needed. What would you cry out about? We've already seen two different issues. Yours might be a third for an end to the disastrous war in the Ukraine, for an end to ever fiercer natural disaster, for help with a different set of physical maladies, for healed relationships in your family, for a United States that is more united rather than a country in which citizens can't even agree on what the basic facts are. For economic stability, rather than this weird economy in which the Federal Reserve System is trying to make the economy slow down. And on and on. It might be debated whether God is indeed the correct refugee, or excuse me, referee, referee for all of those issues or whether people themselves are responsible to find solutions. But at least many people look to God as the one who should make everything right. How long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen? Habakkuk encourages patience. Quote, there is still a vision for the appointed time, if it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Linda waited for several years, waiting in pain. It's one thing to wait while you're sitting comfortably in a waiting room, reading an old magazine and sipping on the coffee you brought along from Dunkin' Donuts. It's another thing to wait in pain when your life has been reduced to living in a nursing home. Waiting can be a challenge, a struggle. We might think of hard work as going out and digging a proverbial ditch or bringing coal out of a mine. But waiting can be hard work too. Perhaps not physically hard, Though for Linda, it was that as well, but at least emotionally and spiritually hard. We want results sooner rather than later, not the passage of more time. And yet Habakkuk gives that as the answer. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. Then he adds, the righteous live by their Faith. Faith. Faith.
faith, as I often say, is roughly the same as trust. You trust that in time, what you need will occur. If you already have what you want, that isn't faith. That's knowledge. That is possessing. Faith is involved when something isn't in hand, and yet you trust that it will come. The same theme comes in our psalm for today. Quote, Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. Notice trust. Notice will do. There was the spiritual struggle for dear Lynn. Trust, not have. Will do, not finished and over. When I began this sermon, I mentioned another word, end, E-N-D. End means the final state, the conclusion, the outcome. This matter is also raised in today's Psalm number 37. Quote, do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass, fade away. This year, the grass seems to have it backwards. At least my grass did. A month or so ago, it was all dead looking and brown. The only things growing in our front yard were the weeds. Today, however, our yard is totally green, and the grass needs to be mowed. But we know that what the psalm points to is the more common chain of events. The grass sprouts, grows in the spring and summer, and then turns brown in the fall, and by winter is gone. For a Senate publication, I recently wrote a prayer for Paul. In the prayer, I begin by thanking God for color, how the same hue, depending on the time of year, can be white with snow, green from leaves and trees, and now in fall, yellow, orange, and red, all topped perhaps by a blue sky and some white puffy clouds or the kind of pastel purple, pink, and gold sunset we had one evening this past week. Of those earthly colors here in Pennsylvania, the ones that stay for the shortest time are usually the yellows, oranges, and reds of fall. The leaves turn color and soon fall out of the trees. A sign of the transitory nature of life. It doesn't last. Quote, they shall soon wither. Everything shall soon wither. The end of the growing season is winter. The green grass fades away. In the same way, our pains and our joys will fade away too. Our psalm today is encouraging us to see this withering and ending as the solution to the problem of evildoers. Those who do wrong will come to an end. They aren't going to cause you trouble forever. No matter if you see the problem as Donald Trump, or if you see the problem as Joe Biden, evil come to an end. The problem is, if you are honest with yourself, you know that you will come to an end too. The withering of the grass isn't just an image that applies to crooks, rapists, and murderers. It's an image that applies to all of us. And because of that, 
We tend to see endings as failures and tragedies. Yes, we can easily see the end of someone evil like Putin as wonderful. But millions of people saw the end of nice old Queen Elizabeth II as an occasion for immense sorrow, not joy. So, wait for the end, we are told. Is that good news or bad news? In some cases, we are inclined to say good. One day Putin will stop waging war because his death will end his ability to do anything. But in other cases, we're inclined to say bad. One day, even the people we love and respect the most will wither too. The end comes to everyone. And yet, a big part of the matter is this. What is the end? Simply nothingness? Not really. Hop over to our second reading, and we find this verse. Our Savior, Christ Jesus, abolished death and brought life and immortality to light. Maybe my old classmate, Linda Bixler, never was set free from that painful condition in her face, at least in this life. But now in faith, we rejoice that she is fine again. The end has come. And because the end means coming to her Savior, she enjoys new life and immortality. Ultimately, there is good news. Ultimately, faith is replaced by knowing and having.
Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for your holy church in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel. God of grace, for parts of the world ravaged by natural disasters, especially at this time we think of sections of our own country. Where even dozens, where dozens of people have even been killed, and thousands have had their homes ruined. Relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes. God of grace, for every nation, and for those entrusted with authority. Grant our leaders self-discipline in all things, and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace, for victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed, and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, especially those we mention in our hearts. God of grace, for this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. God of grace, in thanksgiving that you have abolished death and for the saints who have died, Bring us all to eternal life with you, God of grace. Gather together in the, sweet, in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should, at all times and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.